Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and happy Labor Day. Okay, I know I've posted this video, but this is Labor Day. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you hot dogs, baked beans, and slaw. All right, let's get started. I've already sprayed my pan with Pam, so I won't have any sticky. And we've been using these here, we use hot dog with these. And I'll show you the time they are. They're just ball part frames. And I like to put them in the oven because they're tastier that way. I haven't boiled my hot dog wings in so long. And sometimes we use beef and sometimes we just use regular meat. So these right here are regular meat. Ballpark Franks. So what I do is just put them in the oven and let them cook. Shake them a couple of times and turn them. And then they are delicious when you get ready to make a hot dog with them. Now let me show you how I make my baked beans. Okay, let me go ahead and turn the eye on. Now, if it was any normal holiday, I probably would be using bacon, but since we have so many bacon conscience or pork conscious people, uh, I'm going to make this with brown beef. Brown beef. Now, this is a pack of brown beef that Jalela used half of it to make some spaghetti sauce the other day, and I wanna go ahead and use it up before it goes bad in the refrigerator. So what we're gonna do is brown this here and add some goodness to it. We're gonna be using bush Bush's baked beans to start off with. Now, if you want to, you can just add regular pork and beans, any brand that you want to, and you'll be adding a lot more ingredients to it to get it flavored, but it's still gonna end up the same way. using a whole lot and I'm pretty sure some of you already use ground beef in your baked beans most of the time when we're having a cookout what we do is take some of those um, hamburgers that we cooked and we crumble them up into the baked beans before we put them in the oven and that gives it some extra bite okay now usually I do put bacon in mine and what I do is take about a half of a big pack of bacon that I get from Walmart and I cook it in the oven, and before I put it in the oven, after I got all my other seasonings in it, I'll take that bacon, and I will put it, crumble it up into the meat, into the beans, and bake it like that. Now you can still do that whoever wants to, but today we're putting the ground beef in here. Okay, so once this starts cooking, we're gonna start adding, um, well, we're gonna let it go ahead and brown first, then we'll add the spices to it. We gotta come over here and just turn this. And we're not gonna drain it yet. We're gonna drain some of this oil off once it's all done. All right, there we go. I'm going to chop up half of this pepper and half of the onion. Now this is what your franks or your weenies are gonna look like when you get them out of the oven, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get Monty's plate fixed because he's getting ready to go to work. And he doesn't eat baked beans. 
nor does he eat uh, really much slaw. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make it some hot dogs. And that way he won't have to stop anywhere tonight on the way to work to get him something to eat. I've already got my chili done and I will include a link to my chili, my prize winning chili recipe uh, video. So y'all can have that. So he wants mustard and chili on his hot dog and that's it. Try not to put too much so it won't be too soggy when he gets to work eat tonight. Turn that one this way. Now, if he was home tonight, I probably would have cooked him some french fries with it, but he is probably gonna grab a drink and some chips to go with this. All right, so that's his hot dogs for tonight for dinner. ahead and get this pepper and this onion chopped like I said I'm only gonna be using half because I'm not gonna be making an extremely big pan of baked beans You there what are you doing go ahead and smash that thumbs up that'll give me a like and it'll help YouTube to share this video Now we are going to add the peppers and the onions to the ground beef. Okay, I drained just a little bit of the excess oil from the pan, but it wasn't a whole lot. And since I was going to saute these peppers and onions and use oil, I decided just to go ahead and use the oil from the hamburger meat. Okay, so we got that all in there, looking good so far. It's really pretty and colorful. Okay, you can add a uh, red bell pepper if you want to. You can put some red and some green, or the beans are already gonna be kind of red, so green will make it look real pretty. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is to add the seasonings that I would add to my hamburger, okay? So this is gonna be some garlic salt because you want your meat to be seasoned, okay? That's about a teaspoon of that. Then we're gonna add some seasoning salt okay I'm gonna add approximately about a teaspoon of this here too okay that's good because you want it to be seasoned and you want your little vegetables to be seasoned too I'm right, gonna let this cook until these uh, vegetables get soft peppers and the onion and then we're gonna go ahead and start mixing everything together it's just that easy okay let's let this cook for about five minutes and we'll be back All right, you want to try to cook this long enough so that your vegetables are done. They don't have to be mushy or anything. As long as they're soft, they should be good. Okay, because you don't want anybody to pick up a spoonful of this uh, baked beans and bite down into a crunchy pepper or tomato or a potato. There, I still said it wrong. A crunchy pepper or onion. Okay, so we're gonna let this go for about another couple minutes and then we're gonna start adding them to the beans. All right, let's go ahead and get our beans opened up. We're gonna be using one three pound can of Bush's Original Baked Beans and this is Slow, Slim, Slow, Slow Simmered 
classic with bacon and brown sugar, okay? And we have two small cans at 16.5 ounces. We're gonna be using two of those. All right, I'm gonna turn that meat off because it's good. And now we're gonna mix everything up together and it's just a smooth process at this point because everything is already done. Okay, we're gonna add the beans. Add the small cans. And then the next one. Okay, and it really depends on how big of a crowd you are trying to feed. Okay. Now we're gonna add all of this meat to the pan. Okay, now you're gonna start seeing where the magic is gonna start, okay? Now, we have mustard, brown, um, brown molasses, well, this is grandma's molasses. We have some Kraft sweet honey barbecue sauce. You can add any kind you want to, but this is the kind I'm adding. Okay, we're gonna be putting in some brown sugar and some chili powder. And then we're gonna add some hot sauce to give it some heat. Any brand is good, this is the kind I prefer. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this mixed in pretty good. And then we'll start tasting. Look at that, don't that look good already? Whew. I tell you, ain't nothing like some good baked beans for a cookout, Whew. or just anytime you want some, okay? Okay, first thing we're gonna add is some chili powder. Now we're gonna add probably about a teaspoon. And chili powder is not hot, okay? Red pepper is hot, or cayenne pepper is hot. Okay, next we're going to add our molasses. Add until your ancestors tell you to stop. Okay, so that's good right there. Okay, now we're gonna add some mustard, okay? And we don't have a whole lot in this one. Nope. I got another one up under the cabinet, but what I'm gonna do is use some of this one. We bought this in um, Tennessee, up at Food City, when we were up there, to put in the macaroni and cheese. All right, then we're gonna add our hot sauce. It's gonna give it a little bit of heat. And if you don't want it to have a little bit of heat, don't add it to it, depending on who all you're feeding and what your taste palette is. Let's get everything stirred up. And we're not done adding ingredients yet, but I wanna taste it before I add the brown sugar and the uh, barbecue sauce because I don't want it to be too sweet. Some people love their baked beans to be on the sweet side. Some people don't like it at all. Okay, so let me taste it already. Let me take, get a little taste and see what it tastes like. And what you do is put a little bit on your hand, just like that. Hmm, well, that's good. But what we need now is this here, barbecue sauce. Oh yeah. Because we want it to have some pliability. And then we're going to go ahead and add the brown sugar. 
Now, it already has uh, bacon and brown sugar in here and the beans, but that's about maybe half of a cup. The only thing we're missing is the bacon. Oh, my goodness, y'all. Now, if I'm going to put ground beef, I don't put bacon because one meat is good enough. I'd rather have bacon, but I love it with the ground beef, too. And it tastes even better if you have some of those charbroiled hamburgers that you've chopped up and put in here. Okay. Now, y'all, I'll tell you, these are always a hit. If you got some good baked beans with some good potato salad, that's all you need to cook out with your meats and your hot dog and hamburgers and stuff. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's taste it again and see what it's tasting like. Mm. Ooh, that's good. Let me tell you something. Don't think that just because you didn't cook this on the grill, you can't have the smoky flavor. Let me find my liquid smoke. All right, sorry, but I couldn't find it. But these beans are just as good without it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on Google and I'm gonna get a little screenshot of some liquid smoke and let you see what I'm talking about. So if you have the liquid smoke and you wanna put some in your beans, you go ahead and do that because it'll give it that little smoky char taste that the hamburgers from the grill would have normally gave it. Okay, what I'm gonna do is pour this in an aluminum pan and put it in the oven. These are the aluminum pans that I got from uh, Food City when I was up there last weekend in Tennessee, and it's a five pack. So I'm gonna use one of these. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour the baked beans in there and let them cook on the top of a cookie sheet until they are good and bubbly all the way through, probably about 30 to 45 minutes. Okay, now y'all remember, when you get ready to pour anything into a pan, I always put that spoon there so that it can catch it so you won't have that splashing everywhere. So just put something to catch it. Once you get started, you can take it out. Okay, so that looks like a pretty good sized pan. So we're gonna put this on a cookie sheet so we'll have some stability. And since it's kind of thick, we're gonna let that go for probably a whole 45 minutes, but we're gonna check it, you know, in between. Now, I know I said I wasn't gonna use any pork but those beans that I got had pork in it. You can buy vegetarian beans from the grocery store. So if you don't want pork anywhere in this, just make sure you get the vegetarian beans. All right, now I have my beans in the oven and they are on a baking dish instead of a cooking sheet or a cookie sheet. I'm gonna let this stay in the oven for about 45 minutes. Okay, I'll come back and check it at about 30, 35 to make sure it's not sticking to the sides or anything like that. And we have this on 400. All right, let's go ahead and get this slaw mixed up. Now I have two bags of tri-color coleslaw. This right here came from Walmart. And uh, let's see, this one pound. So we're gonna be putting two pounds of coleslaw mix in here. Now if you want to, you can go through the trouble of chopping up your cabbage and your carrots and your uh, purple cabbage if you want to, which I have done so many times before, but today is not the day for me to do that. The last time I made this slaw on video, I didn't do cut everything up myself either. I used what I already had. Okay, so what we're gonna do is mix everything together. Let's see, you know I have some more uh, carrots in the refrigerator, hold up. Okay, I left those uh, shredded carrots at work, so <laughs> we don't have them. All right, so what we're gonna be adding is some apple cider vinegar, some Mount Olive sweet pickle cubes, you can use sweet pickle relish if you want to. And I have another bottle here just in case we uh, run out because my family loves it in there. Then we have some Duke's mayonnaise and we're gonna be adding some sugar. Now this is half a cup, but we're not gonna be adding all this, okay? The first thing we're gonna do is add some of the sugar, okay? And that's not even half of that. Then we're gonna add the mayo. That looks like about almost a cup full. Okay, then we're gonna give it a stir. And this is gonna shrink. It's gonna draw up, it's going to wilt. 
Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. It's going to wilt, so just be careful of how much mayo you put in here to start with. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and add some of this pickle relish, or pickle cubes. Now my family loves it, so I'm gonna add all of that. Okay. Get everything mixed in together. Look at that big piece right there. We're gonna go ahead and take that big piece out. Put that down the garbage disposal. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the vinegar. And we're gonna add, just say, two caps full. Because you wanna be able to taste the tartness and the sweetness from the sugar and the vinegar and the pickle relish. But you don't want either one of them to overpower the other. Now you can get the uh, coleslaw dressing out of the grocery store, but most of the time we already have all these, ingredient, all these ingredients at home. So I just go ahead and make it myself. See, they got some big ugly pieces in here. Okay. And right now, I'm gonna taste it, but you're really not gonna get the really true flavor of this coleslaw until it's been sitting there for about a good 10 to 15 minutes. Then everything will have marinated a little bit. Now, I usually cook this in the morning when we're having a barbecue or when I'm gonna cook slaw, kinda midday, way hours before we get ready to eat. So we'll have had time to go ahead and marry or marinate. Let me taste a little bit of it. That's good. I think it needs some more, um, a little bit more vinegar, but I'm not gonna add any right now. Like I said, I'm gonna let this sit here for about maybe 15 minutes. And then when I come back, you will have to see how it has um, wilted and the flavors will be even better, okay? So, I'm gonna put this in the fridge, I'm gonna let it sit, and then I'm gonna come back and taste it and see what it needs. If it needs anything, it may not need anything by then, but always be careful not to add too much in the beginning because you don't want to add too much because once you add it, you ca cannot take it out of slaw. Hey, we're gonna check, we're gonna check this, the baked beans. Y'all know what? I think they're good, they're bubbling, and I think they are good now, okay? All you have to do is let them heat through. Let's give them about five more minutes and then we're gonna take them out. This is a chili that's ready. I took it out of the freezer. When I make my chili, I make a big batch. I use a five pound pack of ground beef and then I usually split it and then save half and use half. I've taken the coleslaw out of the refrigerator and you see it's starting to wilt, or it's wilted some. Okay, now at this point, you'll give it another taste and see what it needs. See, it's not too much mayo or anything because it's not real uh, soggy. It's not too soupy. It's just right. So let's try it. Mm, now that's good. That's better than KFC. Oh my God, that's better than any slaw you could ever get at a restaurant. So just make it yourself. All right, so what I'm gonna do is pour it into my plastic container that I'm gonna store it in. Because these hot dogs will probably last us probably about two or three days. And the coleslaw will stay good that long. If you leave it in the refrigerator and we're gonna put it in a plastic um, clear container so that we'll see it and won't forget about it. This is what I'm gonna put it in, a Rubbermaid tag along or take along. That way you won't have to worry about your good <laughs> bowls and things getting gone or not coming back to you. All right, if you take something to a cookout or whatever, work function, because they're so inexpensive, but they come in handy. Okay. 
to just clean it down. And that's what we're gonna use. Now, if you want to, you can use some whole celery seed or a little bit of celery salt and some black pepper if you want yours to be seasoned like that. But I prefer ours to be on the sweet side. So this is gonna be it for me. Okay, we're gonna show you what these look like. Now, as it sits, these are good and hot now, so that's why they're good and loose. But as they sit, they will thicken up. But they were in the oven for 45 minutes. And these right here, y'all, are delicious. I need to give them a try when you cook your Labor Day cookout this year. This is the last cookout of the season. Make sure that you make some of these baked beans. I'd like to take a minute to introduce you to my newest kitchen gadget. This is a five piece set mixing bowl from Priority Chef. Now they contacted me, wanted me to do a review for their products and I love them, I have to say. So this set comes with five mixing bowls and five lids, okay, you see that? Now each bowl has its own measurement scale. Okay, so this bowl right here, the very first one, which is the smallest one, it goes up to, I'm gonna bring it over here so you can see it. And can you see the measurement scale? It is one quart to a half of a quart. And then if you use the liter, it'll tell you the liter size over there on that side. Okay, and each bowl comes marked with the measurement. Now that's the smallest one. Let me show you what the largest one goes up to. So these fit down in there really good. So you're not gonna have to worry about putting food in it and then something spilling out because it's gonna be stuck in there. Now, this right here bowl measures up to, let's see, okay, 4.5 quarts, okay? Look at this, let me show you. See, it's on the back back there. So this is pretty handy. So instead of you having to use a measuring cup, you're gonna be able to see how much you have in this bowl, all right? And each bowl comes with its own measurement scale. Now, let me read the back of the box, and it'll tell you some instructions. I like how they stack together. You can put them like you put the little um, play things, stack them up together, put the lids on the bottom. Now, for this right here, we have non-slip silicone base. That's this right here. So when you're using it, it's not gonna slip off the counter. It stands, sits right there firm, not sliding all over the place. Uses minimal space for storage, meaning you can stack them without the lids on. Measurement scale on all bowls. Lids included for easy food storage. Top rack dishwasher, top rack dishwasher safe. The lids should be washed by hand premium stainless steel okay you guys I love them you can get these at www.priorityshift.com and I will provide a link at the end of this video all right guys Okay, y'all, I just want to say again, happy Labor Day. I hope that everybody's cookout turns out fabulous today, no matter what you cook. And this concludes this video. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you want to be notified each time I upload a new video, please hit the notification bell below. Thanks and God bless.